my friends. Thousands of shoppers circle the mall looking for a parking space. It's the annual after Christmas sale. So many people, many of whom are gorged from months of overabundant eating, but a man stands near the entrance of the mall holding a cardboard sign which reads, will work for food. His poverty is invisible to the shoppers. Their abundance is painfully visible to him. Not everyone is happy at Christmas time. A middle-aged woman sits alone in her home. This is the first Christmas that she can remember that she didn't decorate her house. No music, no twinkling lights. Why is this year different? It's the first year since her divorce that the children have spent Christmas with their father. Instead of children around, she is surrounded by anger and loneliness. Not everyone is happy at Christmas. A zealous, disturbed man watches the stream of pilgrims entering into the ancient city of Bethlehem. They have come to worship in the city of the Savior's birth. They stop at the man's stand to purchase carved olive wood nativity sets. He will make thousands of dollars on a symbol he despises. He waits for the moment for the car bomb to explode. Tomorrow, his act of violence and terrorism will make headlines. Yet another slaughter of the innocents in Bethlehem. Not everyone is happy at Christmas. Look at one more person, Herod. He is king of the Jews. He sits on the throne in Jerusalem. He is a superb politician and a master builder. This man should be happy, but Herod is troubled. He feels the loss of his power so much that he can't even enjoy it. He is so threatened by rivals to his throne that he has killed his wife and several of his children. Herod had just spoken to a set of magi who have come from the east and told him of a sign that they had seen in the skies announcing the birth of a newborn king of the Jews. Not everyone is happy at Christmas. We might ask the question, how can someone be unhappy at Christmas? It could be because they feel left out at Christmas. Now that's not difficult to imagine, is it? Poverty is poor when everyone else seems rich. Hunger is more gnawing when you are surrounded by food. And loneliness is lonelier when everyone else seems to be surrounded by people they love. Sadness is sadder when everyone around you is delirious with happiness. For many, underneath the celebration of the season is what we call the dark side of Christmas. There are some people who cannot wait for the holidays to be over. These people are not necessarily Scrooges or Grinches. They are not like Herod the King. Some people are just lonely or sad or poor. Jesus came for people like that. That is why he was born to a homeless couple. That is why angels announced his birth first to the lowly shepherds. I guess the real question becomes, is God still at work in the world, even on the dark side of Christmas? I believe that our gospel addresses that very question. The birth narrative in St. Matthew's gospel has five appearances by an angel in a dream. Matthew wants us to know that God is at work while everyone else is asleep. The darkness does not limit God. So where was God when the children of Bethlehem were being killed by Herod? God was right there with them, weeping, comforting, 
taking them unto himself. This is the location of God when bad things happen to you or to me or to our loved ones. On those dark days, God is right there. When on the day that Jesus was died, when another puppet of the Roman government, Pontius Pilate, washed his hands of him and sent him off to be crucified, on that day, when evil seemed to have won, God finished with a great redemptive plan. Pilate meant the death of Jesus for evil, but God meant it for good. Do you know someone who's living on the dark side of Christmas this year? Pray for them, think about them, and love them. And remember, the final answer to their darkness is not Christmas, but Easter.